have been posting and tagging people in the what does homesteading mean to me or to us and so we're going to consider ourselves tagged by somebody and uh, I'm going to think of a few other people here to to tag maybe but y'all can consider yourselves tagged as well and just going to talk about what what this life means to us and I guess for me um, everything is about a combination of the animals and the people and health so I want to um, get healthier I've had some health problems with the, the ankylosing spondylitis spinal disease and stuff kind of like a rheumatoid arthritis thing and uh, can't wait to get the garden going. I always had a garden before out at my old place. And can't wait to get some of these animals uh, butchered and in the freezer. So we can really focus on eating meats and vegetables and healthy stuff. And then my long-term goal, uh, we're working on, well, I'm working on, but everybody's helping my <laughs> master of social work I have a degree in uh, psychology and I have a certification in applied animal behavior and our my goal or our goal is to have a place out here where we can work with both traumatized animals and traumatized people and help them heal and so we'll have a place where people can come and stay or just come for therapy type sessions and uh, the the how the little cabins that we're going to build here pretty soon to live in for a while will eventually be places that people can stay as well so that degree with supervision and everything will take a couple years to finish uh, another year of internship year and a half and then a couple years of 
supervision, but I'll be able to start doing the equine assisted therapy at that point. And the animals that were, we've already got some animals out here that were abused, neglected, the horses and, and that that you've seen in the previous video that we're trying to get help for as we, we get them fixed up. So. Not necessarily physically abused animals, it's just they were more neglected than anything. They were, uh, they were out on a on kind of a ranch, I guess you can say, that uh, the woman that had them was older, couldn't take care of them herself, um, and she had given them to her son and, uh, and his kids, but um, some family stuff happened and uh, he wasn't able to take care of them either um, and he he's going away for a while he's gonna try to get himself straightened out I guess maybe I don't know so um, a family friend had reached out to us to see if we can maybe kind of take these animals in and try to rehab them and maybe rehome them and we're gonna we're gonna work with them. We've already kind of got them a little bit established, and uh, we've been um, we had to knock quite a bit of hoof off of Rachel. We'll put kind of a photo oh, in. The, on that's her. on yeah the other video too. We'll see some of that in there. Um, but yeah, like you said, they're not. They're these ones weren't. They were treated really well. Right. Um, they weren't. Um, they weren't abused. Abused. They loved. Greg, they love people, the kids, and that they were just out there on pasture for who knows how many years, and kind of neglected in that. So, um, so <laughs> you guys look at me scared. <laughs> what does it mean to you, the homesteading life? Well, it's all about raising your own food. Um, like I said earlier. Uh, starting starting from scratch uh, we I did a video last year about the homesteading thing you know because um, there was a big controversy over the whole pure living for life thing um, and modern homesteading and so on and and uh, yeah it's there's more of a, a thing going on called modern homesteading it's not homesteading it as to a historical definition, the historical definition would be getting the piece of land from the U.S. government, um, and uh, it was usually a 160-acre parcel, and they they would homestead it. They'd start trying to create something, and and that's kind of what this place was, the where we're at. It was a 160-acre parcel, um, and it. Uh, there was an old homestead out here back in the early 1900s. Um, I showed you guys a foundation. Uh, I will be showing you something else that we found. It's right across the other side side of the creek. Um, some uh, some pretty cool stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's all about just trying to get back to grassroots. Like I said before, it's it's about growing your own food. It's all about eating healthier. Um, you know. Because, I mean, well, grocery store food isn't good stuff anymore. There's so many preservatives and stuff. And when you grow your food, you know what it, what's put into it. And, you know, it's kind of a, kind of rough having to put your animals down and do all that stuff, you know, because you put a lot of hard work and a lot of labor into them and stuff. But it's something that you got to do. But, and, you know, we've got to survive. And that's how we do it. We're... We're human beings. We we eat plants. We eat animals. We that's just nature. Yeah, the the food in the grocery stores, the the nutritional um, value of it is so low compared to what it used to be. And so we really want to to be able to do this out here with the the crop rotation and cover plants and and uh, no-till seeding and things like that that's going to benefit the land and then benefit us in turn.
Jones. What do you think, Greg? I think it's just about how to to learn to to care for animals and work with neglected animals and to make them have a better life and to make and to make your family healthier to make um, to make your animals healthier with not buying hay that you don't know where it's come from really but to grow your own hay and you know what they spread on it kind of like what we've got luck of the draw hay you know yeah we might get a good bale and then next one's got nothing but foxtail and yeah weeds and then mold yeah weeds that are going to be spread onto our property and and that and get in our clothes and have to change clothes every time we feed the animals yeah and, or a dog ear like that or video. in a dog ear yep yeah you get cheap grass in there or some of that foxtail in there mm -hmm. you know that's not good not fun All right, so consider yourselves tagged in this too, and uh, anybody specific you want to want to tag or you can think of that. Uh, I should have looked at uh, at some of the the names of our our most uh, common commenters and followers. And Thomas all. Schmidt homesteading. Yep, Thomas Schmidt's always always there watching and commenting. Um, and uh, RG Homestead RG, Project, yeah, uh, I, th I think is what it's called. Yeah, I'd have to look again. <laughs> I'll have a hard time with names. Yeah, uh, well, we'll make a list of uh, a list of some of you guys down there in the uh, description box, too. We haven't been on YouTube again a lot for a while. We said we were back and we were going to start posting again, and then. We got really busy again for a month and tax season. Taxes. And that's always the that's yeah. always a busy time. And yep. Building the building the pens and stuff up, trying to make some room for the for the newcomers. Well, and I'm getting my dog training business and stuff going to online my animal behavior consulting. I've I've got the the website up. If you go to dogantics.net or 120acrewood.com it takes you to the same place yeah that was another thing that was taking some time getting our website up yeah and I'll be teaching some classes on uh, out school if you guys have heard of that it's for kids but um, I'll be teaching online dog training classes and chicken raising classes and stuff like that for for children so it's been really busy trying to get get that stuff going Gonna get some inventory in to sell for some dog training products and and things. So that meant applying for uh, tax ID numbers and all of that kind of stuff. Lots of paperwork. Anything else? I think that's about covered. All right. Make sure you uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you already haven't, and check out our new website dogantics.net and 120acrewood.com. There should be a link in the dogantics.net.